For the second time this evening, greetings and salutations, Dota fans. We're back with our second best of three of the night. Rising Stars taking on Rattlesnake. Now, the battle of the RSs here does have a lot of meaning for both of these teams. Both have appeared here in the D2L a couple of times already now. Both still in search of their initial win. Not a lot of history between the two teams, despite the similarities in the names and the similarity in talent level, if we're to be honest. Both of these teams really composed of players that have a lot of name recognition to them, a lot of talent, a lot of, you know, if you watch Dota, if you keep up with the Eastern scene, you're going to know these teams, if by nothing else, than star power alone. But so far, underperforming here in Season 4 of the D2L. The last time these two teams met was in the Ace Dota 2 League, and at which point the Rising Stars actually blanked Rattlesnake, going 2 to nothing. So uh, Rattlesnake going to be looking for a little bit of revenge. Let's take a look at how these teams stack up in terms of the rosters. Rising Stars, really a team that lives up to its namesake. A lot of uh, skill in every position. XDD, the leader, he's the hard support with King J in the offlane. CTY, a guy who is continuing to build his reputation, still has some problems with decision making here and there. Still a, a, a player that... As good as he is in terms of pure mechanics, in terms of being able to win his lane in the mid, can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best. In fact, made his name by defeating Ferrari 430 in a one-on-one -on -one mid competition that propelled him into Dota stardom in the Eastern scene. QQQ holds down the support and jungle position with Siler on the carry position. On the other side of the river, going to be their opponents, Rattlesnake. Now, Rising Stars, as we saw, 0-3. Rattlesnake, likewise, 0-3. This means that this match represents for both teams the middle match. If they they really have to get a win under their belt, otherwise they have they face a situation where they have to win out just to maybe perhaps have a chance to hang around and play their way into the playoffs. Luo holds down the carrier position. He's the leader of Rattlesnake with Icy in the offlane, Johnny in mid. Lin plays in the support jungle and Sag on the hard support. Now, it's not quite as much star power as uh, as Rising Stars happens to have, but if you've watched Rattlesnake play, you know how good they can be at times. Johnny in particular, a mid, who will show you flashes of, bri of brilliance. Luo, a guy who if you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. He knows how to get ahead as a carry, knows how to stay ahead as a carry, and knows how to carry his team to victory in every sense of the word. Let's take a look at the greater standings right now and see how all of these teams fit together throughout everything at the top the undefeated the unblemished lgd china after their win uh earlier tonight just uh, in our last series invictus gaming actually improves their record to four and one puts them in great position they're followed by team dk tong fu right now is really struggling a little bit as you can see they've played six matches already compared to the teams behind them which have all only played three and they've only managed to take down two wins so even though they're currently in the top four that's very likely to change as Beachy Gaming continues to get rolling. LGD International, a team that, again, like many teams in this field, can show you flashes of brilliance, but when they run into the more experienced teams, the more stable teams, they do seem to occasionally come apart at the seams. Still, you can't underestimate the potential of that squad. And then, of course, Rising Stars and Rattlesnake, both sitting at 0-3, but if they just win three of their next four matches, can overtake Tongfu unless Tongfu is able to put together a win in their final remaining series. Without a doubt, though, the cream of the crop, LGD Invictus and Team DK. No one really surprised by that. LGD, though, in a very unique position. They only have two matches left now. They're, they're completely unbeaten. If they're able to run the table in their last two matches, they will guarantee themselves a direct seed to our grand finals in Las Vegas, Nevada, coming up in January. I'm your host, Aaron A.C. Chambers. For the insight and analysis, we'll be bringing on Ben Merlini Wu once more. And, uh, you know, I'm actually really looking forward to this series. Even though both teams have yet to really put a win together, so much young and undeveloped talent. These teams very similar in skill level, very similar in play styles in a lot of ways. Both like to get a lead early and like to try and play on that, ride that momentum throughout the entire mid game and into the late game. Rising Stars in particular has shown us time and time again that when it comes to getting a lead early, there aren't many better than them. And that doesn't just include teams that are on that second tier or teams that are kind of riding on that fine line. That very much includes teams like Invictus Gaming, Team DK, etc. So the chance to test themselves against another sometimes volatile feast and famine kind of a team in Rattlesnake going to be something they're going to relish. I would say they should come into this as the heavy favorites. Rattlesnake, though, again, a team you simply can't count out. We'll find out which team is going to be able to put together their first win. One team will end up going 0-4, and with that, 
almost any chance of actually playing their way into the playoffs unless they run the table will vanish as well. So a lot on the line, a lot to play for, and a lot of good Dota ahead. Rising Stars taking on Rattlesnake coming up next on the HyperX D2L. Stick with us. We'll be right back with the draft. And we're back with our second best of three of the night. The Battle of the RS is Rattlesnake Gaming taking on Rising Stars. Both teams in search of their first win throughout divisional play. And one of these teams going to walk out with an 0-4 record by the time all was said and done, putting them in a, in a position where, well, to be honest, if they want to have any prayer of making the pay playoffs, they're going to have to win out and get some help. So never any, it's never a good situation to find yourself in as any professional competitive organization, doesn't matter if it's Dota or otherwise, when your fate is out of your hands. And that's effectively going to be the situation for whichever team loses this series. So in terms of what's actually on the line and what has the most meaning so far early on as we... Uh, roughly cross the halfway point through our uh, Eastern Division. This might be the most important match in relative terms to what it means to each of these teams. We can see the picks and the bands already moving ahead. Venomancer and Clockwork 
And really, I mean, we're beginning to see just uh, uh, now at 6.79, there is definitely an upper tier of heroes that we're beginning to see picked over and over and over again. And to break that down and other trends going on in Dota, most of them involving uh, Hand of Minus, at least if you listen to him, his name's Ben merlini Wu, joining me back on the cast. And tell you what, Ben, we look at what's going on with Rising Stars. We talked extensively the last time we saw them play. They are a team who loves to get an early game lead and loves to try to push it. Sometimes they stumble in that transition from mid-game to late game, and that's where they, they often beat themselves. But uh, they're up against a Rattlesnake gaming squad that, let's be honest, I mean, they are not on the level of an LGD. So this is going to be a team that they are going to have the chance to shove around. Rattlesnake, though, also likes to play that aggressive style and showing it with the Venomancer and Clockwork pick. Mm -hmm. But Rising Stars wants to counter with aggression of their own. Yep. First pick, Night Stalker. This is something that we don't see too often. Mm -hmm. Night Stalker often picked up in like the third pick or so, I think is what we see them the most. So uh, Rattlesnake knows that they have to draft early game heroes that are well equipped to deal with the Night Stalker clockwork. I think it's okay. Venomancer, we've seen try to shut Night Stalker down mid, but that did not work out for Tom Fu in uh, their first game versus IG. Venomancer just didn't really do much versus him, so I'm surprised that they're going with that early, early Veno pick. Yeah, the Venomancer, I mean, we've really seen his popularity waxing the last couple of weeks, and everyone knew coming into 6.79, he was going to be a hero on the who was a beneficiary of a lot of buffs, and we all expected to see him play more. I don't think any of us expected to see him first pick material. I mean, he's good, and teams are beginning to really enjoy running him in mid, and you, you can understand why. I mean, you and I had a brief conversation in our first series of the night about the ups and downs of that. I mean, he's not a very escapable hero. He's not going to scale particularly well um, in terms of survivability and what he can contribute. So you're giving a solo lane, which traditionally is given to some kind of a mid-game damage dealer or at least a hero who can get out of the gate very early and make a difference in the game. Viper being a good example of a hero that you want to put in that position most of the time. But you can't deny what the hero does do well, Nine which is seconds. a lot of damage if he gets ahead in levels, being able to max out. Um, max out your plague wards allows you to push and anti-push and it really gives you a deceptive amount of damage just from that alone especially since it scales with poison sting and you're going to have your uh, venomous scale uh, now with uh, when you get more than one point into it the damage really is kind of ludicrous especially whenever you combine it with a uh, poison nova so the hero is good it's just still kind of this feeling out period is he really a hero that is going to be a top tier mid or is he going to be like we saw in our last game a very very good support so rising stars snags up the life stealer and really ls you want to talk about a hero that got that got hit with the nerf hammer at least in the competitive scene not seeing a lot of life stealers picked up anymore yeah life stealer just gets countered by a lot of the uh, kind of new picks like he can't really do anything versus Night Stalker and Night Stalker able to catch him out pretty early Venomates are pretty good versus him too we've seen a resurgence of clockwork and his rage got nerfed I think he's actually like a situational pick now mm -hmm. he is very good at early aggression though for some particular heroes but who's he really going to kill on Rattlesnake clockwork can just cog him out most of the time Timber saw able to Timber Chain away Venomancer um, can just poison sting him and he's actually very very good for slice or being able to slow him through that rage. Um, I'm surprised he's actually not picked up as often. I don't think he's like that bad. He's just not so easy to pull off anymore. And I guess with the um, waning of popularity of heroes like Queen of Pain, like Puck, like Storm Spirit and Batrider, there aren't any good infest, uh, infest heroes anymore. Yeah, I was kind of thinking along those lines too and Radiant actually thinking pink. they're, they're going to have an unbelievable gank machine when they want it if they want to get that life stealer active early. That's the question. Is, you know, obviously, Night Stalker is going to be active, but is he going to be active to free up farm for the LS or is the LS going to hop on, hop on board and simply try to just snowball out of control in the mid game? Because the Night Stalker, once he has a few points in the Hunter of the Night and obviously with the buffs and so on that he receives, um, it just has the innate the single innate uh, characteristic of the hero that really defines the hero. He can get on you in a hurry, especially if he builds a pair of phase boots, as you often see. So he actually makes, I mean, for a hero that's never going to build a blink and doesn't have any blink-like ability like a co-op, like a, a puck, as you mentioned, he does make a decent carrier for the life stealer just because he can get a BKB up and close distance so remarkably well. And once he gets there, he voids you, he slows you, he silences you, and then you have an infest of an LS out. And it doesn't matter how tanky you are. It doesn't matter if you are a clockwork. You're going to end up dead in that situation, or even if you're a timber saw with reactive armor. So Rattlesnake decides to go ahead and grab the Vengeful Spirit. And Venge is an interesting pick here. I mean, you see, I, whenever I see a Venge pick, usually it's as a direct counter to something. Of course, she can swap the LS if she wants to. That goes to match community. But 
I mean, it's hard. I mean, maybe you can enlighten us. When I see that bench pick, it's hard for me to see exactly what the direct purpose of the hero is. And usually when you do see a bench pick, it's usually with a very specific purpose in mind. It's all about the early game. They just want the early game so that they can uh, counter the early aggression from CMN. I think they would much rather have a CMN in their pool, but with Rising Stars taking it that early, Venge is like the next best option. It's very good for early aggression, minus armor is good for Roshan too. She serves like a slightly different purpose in team fights, initiating with swap sometimes, but for the most part, just there for the disable and the sun in their early game, minus armor doing effective damage. So. I mean, they're just early game damage dealers, fairly good babysitter, just heroes that you want to run around early and get a lot of kills. And we may even see Rattlesick try and put like a lot of pressure on the Night Sucker early, mm -hmm. like a Venomancer mid with a Clockwork and, uh, sorry, Clockwork mid with a Venomancer and Ventral Spirit roaming. That would just make Night Sucker's life like absolutely uh, hell in mid. And if he can't really create space for the life stealer, Rattlesick can kind of take over this game, but they don't really have any carry right now. I fully expect to carry such as mm, who's good in their lineup right now. Luna already banned out by themselves. Um, Wouldn't mind Alchemist. Alchemist would give them more survivability, a little bit harder to mm -hmm. blow up. Alchemist is the safest pick right here. Yep. Uh, he's not particularly great versus Lifestealer, though. It's the only reason why I don't think they'll pick him up. Yep. Well, it's I, I whenever I, 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 I agree with you completely. I feel like maybe the, the Alchemist is just one of those safety belt heroes. He is going to be able to catch up if you give him, give him any amount of space because of Grievel's Greed. Um, can build something like a basher to try and deal with the LS if he gets ahead, even an abyssal, so on and so forth. But I just like the way he would fit into this. I mean, like you said, Venomancer, he's kind of meat. He just gets eaten up uh, by heroes like Night Stalker and Lifestealer. But then you've got the Clock, the Timbersaw, and the Venge. They're going to help deal with that LS. The Clockwork in particular, being able to cog the Lifestealer uh, inside and then just free up an Alchemist to chase down a Night Stalker to go head-to-head -head with that. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. A Medusa pickup. Gonna that's be. Cool. Yeah, I have never seen. I've never casted a Medusa in competitive play. So I have one time. Yep. It's. Uh, I'll let you analyze the hero. Um, I mean, Medusa. When you see that, she just takes so long to get going, and that that's kind of the weird thing. Is you, we were just talking about how the front four from Rattlesnake is a four that really could put some pressure on and even go toe to toe in the mid game. With the Night Stalker Life Stealer. I mean, you want to talk about some roaming potential, Sacred Arrow after Frostbite and so on and so forth. The way they all chain together, avoid into Sacred Arrow, hella open wounds into Sacred Arrow. They have so many ways to initiate fights. So you pick this mid game oriented team that like Rattlesnake has in their front four. Then you tack on arguably the hardest farming and most farm needed carry in the entire game. Yeah, they might not play her as a farmer, though. Oftentimes, we see her built as a very early tank, and she's just pretty much there to bait out a lot of souls and just to be annoying. And then Stone Gaze, turn around on heroes like Lifestealer. Even through Rage, he'll still get Stone Gazed, and if he runs away, he won't have his Rage up for a few seconds, and then you just kill him after that. And you can also, like, force people to stay around with Clockwork Ultimate with or Clockwork Cog, rather, Ventral Spirit Swap. So I think if they play Dusa in that way and bring the fight to Dusa, um, then they can win out. But as a hard carry, she is just lackluster at best. She takes way too long to ramp up. Um, she farms slowly. She's susceptible to early ganks. She doesn't have, really have good lane control. She just doesn't really have that much going for her as a hero. Very, very poor in laning phase. We see some synergy with the Ventral Spirit. This is where Ventral Spirit is much better than this Crystal Maiden. If you want to um, do a lot of physical damage during the Stone Gaze, you minus armor them, you Stone Gaze them, and then you right-click away. But hopefully you have some items to back it up because there's no one early else who's going to do right click damage except for Dusa. So I kind of see like where the mid game stone gaze but they don't really have the heroes to back it up. Oftentimes you want like a gyrocopter like a Sven something like that to follow up at their stone gaze but I think it's just going to be a super farming role in this game and try and uh, wait out the late game because Life Zero does actually very poorly versus um, Medusa in the late game. As both teams move out, the lanes begin to take shape. We'll run through our lineups as no one seems to be invading anyone else. On the side of Rising Stars here in mid, we'll have CTY setting up shop. And really no surprise to see that. Such was the time that if you saw a, a Night Stalker, he would often wind up in offensive tri-lanes or occasionally as an off lane. But really mid the place he wants to be, 6.79 and after. King J going to be playing on a Marana. King J, the off laner for Rising Stars, so may be doing his own thing off here by himself. And really, you know, the, the old school tri lane has really been suffering a lot. So this actually has a very 6.78 look so far. Speaking of, a very popular 6.78 hero, at least for a time. That's Shadow Demon. Love the synergy between these three heroes. XDD likely to, to lead off 
Um, any kind of an engagement with a disruption, followed up with a frostbite and a Nova and Siler, of course, with open wounds off of that life stealer. Very dangerous uh, tri lane here. And again, kind of a, a, an old school. And there's a haste room that they're going to spot out. And doesn't look like it's going to be challenged much. One person will come over and take a look. That'll be the timber. But as we see them pick that up, we'll run through the rest of the lineups. On the other side, Rattlesnake going to have Luo farming this Medusa. She is going to have a couple of supports hanging out in the jungle, at least for now, with her. Clockwork going to be played by Icy. He's down in the off lane for the moment. Then we're going to have our Timber Saw setting up shop in mid. 1-2-1 one, one, going head-to-head -head with CTY here in this matchup. Venomancer played by Johnny. Now, Johnny is the typical mid for Rattlesnake. This time, though, going to be playing the Vito not in a mid position, but in a pure support position. And the Vengeful Spirit going to be played by Sag. So this is going to be a Marana that does need to watch herself. And there's the disruption. Let's see if they want to lead it off with anything else. Nope, no arrow coming out. There's going to be a stun from the Venge, though. And the Gale's going to connect. The Leap's there. They still might be able to pursue her down. Couple more auto attacks. Are they going to dive it? Johnny, one last auto attack, but no points in the poison sting, obviously, because he's level one, and he might end up dead. One more auto attack would have done it. He salves immediately. Five up. HP. Man, both of those heroes just getting away solo. Very smart by King J not to skill up until later. He salves up, and looks like no harm, no foul for them. I'm, I'm not exactly sure why his Shadow Demon uh, went on that, or why King J was so close, or rather. But yeah, any uh, regular hero, you follow that up with another stun, he's dead. But Mystic Snake, so slow, so little damage, and unable to capitalize on that. A very nice initiation by Venge. Like the rotation, sending the Shadow Demon up there. As we can see, this is going to be largely a one-on-one. -on -one. They see the clockwork and say, that's fine. Lifestealer can deal with that just fine early on in lane. So, Siler going to be essentially getting free farm. That's going to be the question here out of King J and XDD is just how much pressure do they want to put on here? Johnny might be spotted, but no disruption. So, we'll keep an eye on this lane as it does have a lot of volatile potential. A lot of squishy supports between the Shadow Demon, the Venno, and the Venge. So, any amount of damage, especially now that King J has Sacred Arrow, really could turn into a kill very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. And it looks like they may be rotating mid right now. They have an observer ward on top. Guess they were just checking the two minute rune. It will go bottom to Icy. No bottle on him yet, but he does have his boots. He may be able to get a kill on QQQ. Oh, no, actually, QQQ is not actually going up that hill. He will scout it out, though. Gets one hit on Icy right now. Speaking of last hits, 11 or 12 and 7 rather on the life sealer. He is doing phenomenally. Timbersaw also doing very well, though. King J and XDD continuing to. Try to be nuisances up here. Getting some experience at the very least. Level 2 for Shadow Demon now, so he will have Soul Catcher. Or, yep, I was going to say, maybe a Shadow Poison, but not going to be the case. King J, a little far forward. Are they going to spend anything? Nope, just going to conserve their mana, doing what they can. They could have just killed XDD right there. If they get yep. a stun off right there, I'm pretty sure he's dead. Yep. Would have taken a Sacred Arrow to try and bail him out. It would have been one hell of a Sacred Arrow. I see continuing to move around with his double damage. In mid, going back and forth, CTY and 1-2-1. One, 1-2-1 two, one. One, two, one, sitting at 16 CS to the 10 of CTY. So the Timber Saw coming out, a big winner there. Yep. Nice soccer with level 1 Void. This is something that we see uh, quite often, actually. You save up your skill points because all you really do with level 1 Void is just last hit. You don't really need to harass at all. And he doesn't need Hunter Knight because it's not nighttime. So you can think about whether or not you want your one point in Crippling Fear later. But CTY not doing too well in the CS department. 1-2-1 uh, doing a very good job, even though he's not the typical mid uh, player for Rattlesnake like you talked about. Yep, Johnny usually the one. To play that saw the venomancer and didn't really have a chance to talk about it thought for sure he'd be end up being and he's taking some pretty decent harass here he has r neglected to pull the trigger at least twice that i've seen now when i feel like he could have hit a gale on that shadow demon and i don't know that there would have been a lot that they could have done to have stopped a uh, first blood attempt but anyway cty bottle crowing up amid very quiet early game we've had next to no roaming so far and and 6.79 i mean this is our second week broadcasting it here in the eastern division that's kind of a rarity usually these supports get very very active now yeah, they don't really have a need to. Um, I think that Rising Stars, they just need to counter the aggression from the three heroes on top. Just minimize losses in a triple lane. They're doing very, very well. Not giving up first blood and um, not giving, or not like King is still getting okay farm, I guess, in terms of levels. He's three and two right now. It is nighttime. Is CTY going to move around? And CTY, he is a fantastic mid CSer. I'm not sure if I would call him a fantastic mid player, though, just because a lot of times we see nice hoggers, or he's actually like level going to be level six very, very soon but he just 
doesn't really have that much of an impact in the mid game, especially with his early game dominance. And he's not actually dominating this early game. Let's see if he can turn that around though with a couple of quick ganks. Unfortunately, Timbersaw does have the four minute rune with a haste. We see Sag actually rotating. Are they going to try and kill CTY? He's at full HP right now. It's going to be quite difficult for them to do so. Yeah, perhaps going to try to dive him back. There's another little bit of whirling death harass. They actually had a shot of the courier there if they had. Wanted to take it, but such is not the case. They realize the Venge is missing. You can see... Oh, CTY is going to give up first blood. Yep, I CTY think. will be stunned under his own tower. There's the Chakram. And first blood goes the way of 1-2-1. One, one. Congrats to our viewers we see there who won the prize. I used to call that out. I need to get back to doing that. Triple LC, Innocent Hunter, and a Chinese name with an A after it. A barcode with an A after it. So congratulations to you guys winning the first blood award here in game one of our second best of three of the night rising stars versus rattlesnake very nice uh kill there for one two one in a number of ways being able to hold the night stalker down hold on hold that thought cty does not like being held down there's a disruption to lead things off soul catcher on the mark they're gonna go after luo but the gale connected down to about a third health is she tanky enough Yes, she is. Johnny might not be, though, so they're not going to end up getting the Medusa. One more auto attack, and that'll do. Actually, didn't even need it. Just the poison from Shadow Poison enough to secure the kill. So they didn't get the kill they wanted, but at least CTY gets himself on the board. Sag is looking for him right now. He, uh, it looks like Sag wants to lay a ward. He needs to lay a ward. ASAP. He drops a sentry and an ob, so it looks like they are safe, but CTY, I don't, I guess he was going to check the six minute room. I thought he was going to at least scout out here. The night vision being a really big deal right now. Observer Ward will actually, yes, it Dyer's will scout him out. CTY Dyer's finds tower. Sag. Here he goes with the illusions. Oh, no. Uh, XD. Right back there to zone him out as well. Night Stalker picks up the Midas in the biggest not surprise of all time because you build Midas on everyone who wants any amount of gold, even if it is a Crystal Maiden. But, um, 1-2-1, one, one, rotating his way up here. Now we've actually got Ford. We're going to have a big throwdown up here as we see King J teleporting in as well. So a lot of firepower on both sides. CTY is actually leaving those. So this could get very dirty if for Rising Stars, if Rattlesnake decides to pull the trigger and catches them unawares. Marana showing her face. That might be enough to ward this off because they're not going to know where the light night stalk. Well, check that. He just showed his face back in mid. So they should have a good idea. Yep, they're going to smoke and go for this. And this makes a ton of sense. They know... They have the advantage. It's just a matter of who they can pick off. Obviously, the first two targets of supports, they're playing pretty far back. King J, a tough target to catch. And it looks like they finally realize that something's up. There's no one else on the board, and they're not about to give Rattlesnake another free kill. Yeah, very good awareness by Rising Stars here. I also thought the mid gank on uh, the Night Stalker was pretty obvious. He had vision over here, but again, like... CTY just not doesn't have the best awareness. He could have fogged over here and prevented first blood. But regardless, good job by the rest of his teammates dodging this gank up top. Uh, they do need to get something accomplished during nighttime. There's only 20 seconds left unless CTY picks up his ultimate right now. Nope, level 4 void. And XDD, QQ, moving in. They are going to smoke. Now, night is going to be coming to a close in about 10 seconds. Oh, they might go for, turn around and go for a 1 2 1. Yep, one two one shows nope. himself. Nope, they're gonna go ahead and try to dive icy. One would imagine if they should cross behind and they will near the dire side ancients. And this should be a fairly easy kill so long no, as they do it right. Daytime though. Up, oh, they're gonna find him. There's a frostbite to lead things off, or actually a no, but then the frostbite and yeah, not gonna be a whole lot he can do. Cty should be able to catch him with phase boots and. Will be able to do so. There's a disruption behind it. He will go ahead and get the last hit on Icy. And there's a Gale that catches XDD. Johnny being bursted down. Now here comes 1-2-1, though, and they end up making it a double kill for CTY. Rattlesnake going to get the stun off on CTY as he tries to get out. There's the ult to use, though. That should be enough. Chakram slows him. No, whirling death. Enough to bring him down and give 1-2-1 a double kill of his own. So it's the battle of the mids here in game number one. 1-2-1 one, one is CTY setting the pace completely. QQQ next on the kill list, but... 1-2-1, one, one, runs out of mana, runs out of steam, and will make his way back to mid. 3-3, three to three, taking an early look at the gold graph as we approach 9 minutes. Still a 1,000 gold advantage going the way of Rising Stars. Just about that much in experience. Still a very close match. We have a very good block there by Sag. Uh, just blocking it so it takes a little bit more damage from Shocker Moon. Unable to uh, run down that hill even during nighttime. So good play by the support from uh, Rattlesnake right now. Luo farming away. Looks like he's not going greedy, not going for an HOD stack or a Midas. Just going for early agi treads. I think that's the right decision in this game considering there is a Night Stalker in the game. But CTY not having the most success during his first night. 2-2-1. Not a bad night by any means though.
And, you know, with the, the night buff, he's not that far away. He's about halfway to the, to the second night now, too. So, in the meantime, Rattlesnake about halfway to their next objective as they've got Sag and Icy smoked up again. And, you know, again, this is characteristic of both teams. Both teams love to get the early game advantage and let that be the cornerstone of their strategy. And we're, I expect we're going to see continue to see a lot of movement. We actually haven't seen nearly as many kills in 10 minutes as I assumed we would. And Sacred Arrow, not going to catch anything. But at the same time, a lot of aggression has been happening. Marana could be in trouble here. She's going to be completely caught out here. There's the stun. And Icy will try to pursue him out. There's a nice hook. And very nice sidestep there from Sack. Getting out of the way of the clockwork and Icy landing the hook to put another kill on the board and give Rattlesnake the advantage. The slow reaction by their... Uh, by the heroes like he popped out a smoke and Venge stun is pretty short range you turn around and leap really fast and try and dodge a stun but just not that quick with their fingers rising stars like better player like really good players like the IG and DK players it's like they have a really small chance to escape but they're just a tiny bit slower on their reflexes than them um King J needs to find some farm though just brown boots bottle and a ring of basilius on him right now and shadow demon also hasn't been able to save too many people with defensive disrupts he's been trying to pick up some kills around the map though johnny going with a max ward build at level five and a half he's actually pretty high level as a venomancer this game uh, almost level six compared to uh, just both level four from the rising stars supports actually shadow demon just hit five i'll tell you what you want to talk about some farm you might Mission, you know, trying to find some farm. A guy who has found it and found it more so than anyone could ask. Siler is sitting at 81 CS at 11 minutes into this game. His farm at 11 minutes in is so massive that it has smaller farms orbiting it. It is just huge. 81 CS, Siler, with his Midas up already, has his Helm of Iron Will towards his, uh, towards his armlet and a set of face boots already. So he's going to be able to get it active as soon as he wants to do so. And right now, Rising Stars has to feel good about just playing it even for the moment. They don't have to play ultra-aggressive if they don't want to. Let Rattlesnake try to, make, try to make things happen. Let them make the mistakes until nighttime. And speaking of nighttime, only about 15 seconds out. We're going to see the ulti popped, and they're going to try to die. Oh, looks like they thought about it. There's going to be the Moonlight Shadow as Rattlesnake does rotate one in. Just icy, though, but still enough to shut down that early dive attempt. Yeah, it looks like they're looking for a kill on top. Is the, Are they going to be able to get the bottom arrow on Luo? If they get enough farm on life to though, Medusa's not going to be that big a factor. If she just gets bashed to death, then there's not really that much you can do about a butterfly or not. Uh, life Seal just farms a lot faster than Luo and is generally easier to survive with in fights, especially with this build, uh, the 042 build. There's a disruption. And Sag is there. Sacred Arrow's on the mark, but the swap to get him out of trouble. Now King J stunned out after it. Sag showing off why. That video makes so much sense. There's a hook that does end up cleaning up the Marana. In the meantime, Stone Gaze pop. They're trying to run QQQ. Going to be cogged in. Next on the list is XDD and Sag. Single-handedly turn that fight around. A nice hook from Icy certainly helped out. But saving the Medusa, stunning out, and setting up that chain of events. Now the Chakram thrown out. A little bit short on Siler. Big reaction from Rattlesnake as they are now more than doubling up. Rising Stars 7-3. to three. And, you know, Siler has been left largely to his own devices. They're going to have to start getting him involved. They do not want this Rattlesnake squad getting this many kills on the board, especially when Rising Stars is the team with the, the Night Stalker with a DD. Yeah, um, again, they're just not getting that much mileage out of CTY. It yeah. was nighttime. Why is he like not there for that fight? But uh, they're also playing too aggressively without their full team. They can't try and uh, four-man their carry when their carry is not evolving the fight. And that was just very good positioning by the Vengeful Spirit too. Yeah. Just anticipating the game, being able to swap them out and then completely turn the fight around. Stonefeast is actually a very, very powerful ultimate too. They were able to pick up another kill because of that. So... Rattlesnake doing very good job in this game thus far. Gold lead is still in favor of Rising Stars because of Siler's farm experience, though heavily in favor of Rattlesnake. They need level 6 on their support. Shadow Demon very close to level 6. I guess CMs doesn't matter that much. He's rarely able to actually pull off a nice freezing field. Siler, Armlet, Midas, phase all done. 500 gold set away as well if he wants to go something like drums or he could go straight up S and Y. We're going to have 1-2-1. One, one. Spotted out and silenced and he took the bait. Icy waiting on a hook and the arrow will connect on Icy. Not going to help him a ton because of battery assault. There's Chakram however. Moonlight Shadow will be popped. 1-2-1 one, one. will end up dropping in the meantime. Stone Gaze slows him down and the snake not going to do enough damage to secure another kill. He'll Siler though engaging on Sag and Icy actually locked him out. He gets a stun off before being blown up. 
Sacred Arrow will shoot oh, wide that time. It'll hit Johnny. No, 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 hit Johnny. Oh, it did. Pure luck that time, Johnny. Ends up being on the. Oh, I, that that's that's a broken keyboard. That's the kind of thing that makes you throw a keyboard. That arrow was not meant for him. He rounded the wrong corner at the wrong time, and it ends up feeding CTY because of it. Rising Stars, you know what, guys? Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and they're showing it right now. Closing that gap back to 6-7. to seven. And now they're finally pulling together as a team. Yeah. Night Soccer actually engaging in an opportunity during nighttime. Shadow Demon with a very nice defensive disrupt, and Siler there early on the fight. These are the small things that you know, once everything comes together, Rising Stars can actually make use of their pretty gold, pretty big gold lead. And now XP Graph definitely in favor of Rising Stars right now. They also forced a buyback out of Timber Saw too. And yep. he was having such a good start, three zero and zero before that fight. Now three one and zero that will delay his Bloodstone quite significantly. And now, like Rattlesnake has to be very very scared during uh, nighttime. They they were like doing pretty well before, but after that they're like, man. We really can't take fights during nighttime. They don't have any heroes with night vision right now either. They do have the Vino Wars to spot things out, but Dusa also forced to go for a drums build. And if you're going to go power trash drums, I think there are better candidates, but let's see if the Dusa pick works out for them. Rising Stars denies the tower, and they moved. I was actually going to show you or show our viewers just to make the point that you made it. So far as Rattlesnake needs to be afraid at night, let's see. There's a way that you can do this. Is it... There's a way you can draw. F2. There oh, it is. Draw. No, draw. There you go. You can draw and move the camera at the same time. This line, basically, that's where all of their heroes were positioned after that engagement. They had all five up. They were playing in such a defensive position just because they were so afraid of the Night Stalker all of a sudden. And that's what you want when you have a Night Stalker on your team. You want him to be a one-man force of nature, especially now with Siler in such great shape. 1,500 gold set away, and Infest is ready. I'm really surprised we haven't seen him Infest into the Night Stalker yet, but we're going to have... I see cogging in. There's a disruption to buy a little bit of time. There's a swap as well. XDD gets off the Demonic Purge. He will end up dead. That's two down, the Crystal Maiden and the Shadow Demon, as the rest of Rising Stars is forced to pull back. And Rattlesnake giving as good as they're getting, counterpunching with the best of them. Looks like they want to go ahead and try to push down this Tier 1 top. Siler's there with CTY, so the damage dealers are there. He's going to go ahead and rage out. Johnny going to be the next target. And, wow, big... Okay, the server just completely went berserk there for me. Um, they actually didn't manage to get a kill that time. QQQ back in, throws out the Nova. Now there's going to be a stun on the Siler on the low ground. Here comes XDD looking to make something happen. CTY going to pursue this out. Gets the Void off on Luo. Now eyeing Johnny. Shadow Poison being spammed out. Nice Poison Nova. Caught three. And Moonlight Shadow going to be popped. CTY is going to end up dead because of it. Though Siler manages to use Infest to get himself out of trouble at least a little bit after tracking down the Venomancer. But will be stunned. Can they finish him off? They can. Rising Stars. Trying to play aggressive, and XDD's not out of the woods yet either. Icy's going to have a hook in five seconds. If they just clear out, it's a guaranteed kill. Hell, they don't need it. He's going to have a hook. Uh, and never mind, got caught by the arrow, but QQQ now on the run and cleaned up again. Just like that, a near full team white. And Rattlesnake, who had the gap closed on them. I can't wait to see the gold graph update after that. Vino says, you know what, we're getting to Midas. Just look how up and down this game has been in terms of XP and gold both. It was just silly for the supports to be over here. They can't be over here during nighttime when they have a Night Stalker. They need to be over here. The Siler was up in front, which is his job. And then we saw Night, Light, Night, Night Stalker like way too far over to the left side. He needs to be scouting out for his team, tanking so he can get defensive disrupts off. Once your support dies, they're like way out of firepower just because the Venge and the Clockwork and the Vino are just so more, so much more useful in drawn long, out, long fights. So. Rising Stars just got caught out there. They should have just cut their losses, backed off right then, wait for the supports, and then take on, take on a real 5-on-5. Five five. And Siler actually died too, and he's 1-1-3 one, one, and three even after his fantastic early game start. So Rising Stars just needs to be better at positioning, and CTY needs to find those opportunities for them and just be in the middle of the fights. He needs to absorb a lot of the a lot of the uh, aggression from Rattlesnake, and he is just sometimes just out of position. I don't really know why he's not uh, just playing up in the forefront and letting XDD and QQ get hook shot, get cogged. He needs to be the one preventing that Dying sort of stuff from happening. Tell you who's an absolute beast this game is 1-2-1. One, one. Currently sitting at 7-1-1, one, and one, has been involved. And uh, eight of the 13 kills Rattlesnake has strung together. His farm not quite as high. He's in second position behind the Night Stalker, excuse me, the Life Stealer, just because Siler has been just bonkers. I mean, he got the Midas up very, very quickly. 
and his CS count is just through the roof. 131 CS in 19 minutes. So, I mean, you're talking about as good as you're ever going to see in a professional game where, you're, you know, they're actually contesting it. But uh, despite that, I mean, the Timbersaw is just going to be such a huge influence moving forward. And he's going to try to be an influence now as he teleports in. There's going to be one more coming in as well. Smoke Gank moving out from Rising Stars. They've got three. Moving under cover of Smoke with King J. Sending up shop along with them. And we'll see if he wants to take a shot at something. Luo's out front. They will send someone around back. That will be 1-2-1. One, one. Looks like that's going to be enough to scare Rising Stars away. Rising Star's game plan is just very lackluster right now. All they're doing is trying to kill the Dusa up top, and she's just staying there and farming while her team's sitting behind her. That's just such a bad plan because they're not getting any farm. Dusa is, and they're not getting anything else out of it. What they need to do is push mid and force them to rotate away from top, draw them around the map, and then once they split up, you pick them off. But when they're grouped up like that in a very safe position at their top T1, and you're not getting any farm, they just keep losing out on more and more gold. Gold is slightly in favor of Rattlesnakes right now. Um, and Luo is getting his farm up. He has an ultimate orb. He is actually getting kind of scary. He has not yet died yet on Dusa. CT is about to walk into a trap. Yep. Got to cog him in. He pops the ulti for basically just to do it. As he, there was... CTY, man. CTY. You know, CTY is one of those players, Ben. We've seen him play so good, but... Last couple of series we've watched out of him, he really has had some problems. His decision making, I mean, and you can't, you know, that's a trap. You just end up walking into that. You can't always help that. And the Sacred Arrow will be dodged. But he has just been struggling of late. We just haven't seen him be as dominant a player as we know he can be. Yeah, I don't really think that's his, his type of hero. I think he needs more of like the farmy uh, type carry in mid, like uh, Queen of Pain, for example. Just uh, you, you're not really pressured to gank that much because you still do really well with items. Like Night Soccer really has the gank. Venomancer like does like okay with items, but if you're gonna farm, pick a different hero for it. I think he just does much better with those, uh, just because he's not the best at picking and choosing fights, and farming is usually the better choice for him. And now Rising Stars are in a lot of trouble right now with CTY down, with night uh, daytime just hitting, and Vino Wars up, and um, do they have a medallion up? Oh, yep, they have a medallion on Ventral Spear as well as level 3 Wave of Terror. They're in a very good position to take out Roshan, and once that happens, Medusa is just going to be an absolute monster to deal with. Rising Stars moving four into mid. Looks like they suspect something's up, and... Or at the very least, want to make something happen in mid. Next night will be upon us in 15 seconds. And this is going to be pretty damn important for CTY. I mean, up and down up and down game for him so far. He's not doing terrible in terms of CS. And the Sacred Arrow will be dodged. They should see the Roches being harried a bit by Rattlesnake. But sitting at 5-4-1, definitely just riding that fine line of usefulness versus... You know, is it worth the trade-off? And Marana, by the way, has picked up her Midas as well because that's what everyone does. You build Hand of Midas in defense of the Midas. Yeah, this was like their first pick, too, and they're just not getting that much mileage out of wow. the Night Stalker. Lifestealer with a Deso done already. Yeah, yeah, he is super fun. I'm surprised he didn't go for a Basher, um, but uh, Deso does do a lot more damage. They do need more damage since so CTY isn't able to provide that much. He has his BKB completed, though. So this may be the time for CTY. Nighttime just hit. This is a very good fight for them to take if they can catch him unawares without uh, the Medusa there to fight. They should take this fight, like, immediately. There's Shadow. And here we go. CTY pops the BKB. Freshly completed. Going to go right on 1-2-1. One, one. We actually see Siler getting involved as well onto Sag. There's the freezing field. They will get 1-2-1 one, one for sure. In the meantime, XCD disrupts himself. And the Venno ends up dropping as well. Icy. May, oh, he's actually going to hook back in to try and kill XDD. 1-2-1, one, one, fresh up off the buyback. Manages to clear them out. Marana can't hang around. Night Stalker can't hang around. Siler perhaps could have, but opting not to. So Rattlesnake, even though they lose a couple and they have to spend another buyback, looks like they're quite happy with the result. They might make their way. Not. Nope, they really kind of can't. They really need the Venge to do Roche. And yeah, they definitely need the Venge. One, 2 one's pretty far too. He has his Bloodstone, surprisingly. CM, more Midas's? Why not? Yeah, so how many is that? That is now one, two, three, four. Four minuses. So if we stick with what we set the other night, I think we, we kind of arbitrarily decided, well, it proved itself out. The over-under on minuses in a game, if you're a betting, if you're the betting kind, we need to contact Dota Lounge and have them just start putting that as an option to bet rares on. Take the over or the under. Nine and a half minutes is when you expect your first minus over-under, and a three and a half minus per game is, is the average we're seeing Seems so far. Seems pretty fair. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But uh, 10 to 15, my friend, and 
Rattlesnake seems to be pretty well in control of their fate. CTY, I feel like I should be more on board with how well he's playing. I'm just... Well, not necessarily how well he's playing. I feel like I should... His Night Stalker should be more impressive to me. And it just isn't. I really can't put my thumb on why. He's just not in their face. Like, well, he may get in their face right now. But, like, uh, Ferrari... Or I forgot who played Night Stalker in one of these games. But it was just, like, all up in the opponent's face. Like, yep. always scouting out. Always finding opportunities for his team. But he's, like, often in the back line. Just, like... Uh, he he plays it. He doesn't play it like a nice locker. He plays it like a squishy hero, yeah. like a uh, for the most part. Until he has his BKB. When he once he has his BKB, then yeah, he starts going in man mode. But he doesn't really have anything to worry about. But nice locker with his pretty good stat game, with his fairly high HP base and tons of movement speed, he should be able to just run in there without uh, without being too scared. And it looks like they're trying to do a Roshan right now. Uh, vengeful. They might pop their smoke right now though. Uh, yep, there it is. Siler got spotted. Here they come back out. The immediate swap out. They're going to blow up QQQ. Never had a chance. There's the Stone Gaze. Sag in trouble. Pursued out by the BKB CTY, but able to keep himself alive so far. CTY, under cover of Moonlight Shadow, will be making a run away for it. And, up, oh, hang on. Sag will be silenced out. Here comes Luo, though. Now, Luo is getting scary. Finished a Manta style mere moments ago. So you want to talk about some damage output? He has it. He's hitting for about 150 a shot right now which simply is not all that bad. I mean, uh, in terms of armor as well, sitting at 15 armor, so feeling very survivable on top of the mana shield. So, so needs is, uh, bad oh, they nice to, oh, hook. What a nice hook shot. Yep, taking it through two strands of trees. That's the equivalent of being able to drive the dog leg. If you happen to play golf, you'll understand what I'm talking what I'm talking about. Basically, went straight from here. There you go. Yeah, I, I heard Sesh over there. I heard him chuckle. He got it. Able to drive the dog leg. But uh, yeah, just the thing about CTY, he dies at really inopportune times. Like he knew they were all pushing down bottom, and they, he knows they have a long range initiate. But why? Why is he over there? It just doesn't make sense. And his team is trying to make something out of nothing by bringing me over pressure to T2. Um, but like for example, if he just like hit out over here, he could probably like uh, pick them off as they're retreating. Like if they pressure the T2 on middle, then they TP away. There's like one or two heroes left behind, and instead now they get a Roshan because of CTY getting picked off. And these aren't unimportant that CTY dies at really inopportune times. They lose a very important hero, a Roshan and a T1 because of one death. Roshan will drop and it will go on to Medusa. So I'll tell you what, man. First game I've casted with a Medusa in it and I'm liking the way it looks. Another good hook. Gonna land on King J. Dust goes off but she leaps out just in time. In the meantime, they're gonna be able to catch up with Siler and he will be forced to infest. Comes right back out and the swap back and the Gale on top of it. Beautiful chain of initiation. Johnny following up the swap like they planned it, like they practiced it at home. A big pickoff there. The Lifestealer down for 60 seconds now in this game, beginning to get a smidge back under control in terms of Rattlesnake. Rattlesnake, um, again, you know, they've been playing so well throughout the game, but still have been playing from behind for Rising Stars, has done such a good job of just making sure that they always, you know, were able to trade at least remotely even. But finally, we're seeing all of this farm on Luo kick in. And Siler, surprisingly, we're just not feeling his farm kick in that much. As look at his net worth. And then you look at where he should be in terms of things. He's 2-2-5, two, two, and five, even though he's by far the most massive uh, hero on the, on the map right now. Yeah, uh, I also don't know why he popped out of the infest. He can just chill in the creep and wait until they go mid and perhaps turn the fight around. I mean, they don't have the ages there, but it would have been a better chance of him surviving. He didn't have rage up when he popped out either. Uh, granted, if he tried to rage TP, he still would have gotten swapped, but it would have bought a little bit more time. Maybe he just wanted to um, have his timer reset as fast as possible. Looks like the five-man train is continuing. Daytime just hit. Things are looking worse and worse for Rising Stars right now. They have a haste room on CTY, but AC is not coming anytime soon if he is going for that with his play mail. Siler can't really farm right now because there's so much pressure. He just revived. He can't split push. And they're split pushing with like a CM right now, right? That should be Siler, who actually died earlier, or CTY, someone who does a lot of damage. But now they're in a really bad position right now because they're not exchanging anything for this T2. Got three heroes in range to try and contest it. CTY has his ult available, plus a haste rune. And now here comes the TP. They might take a shot at this. And let's see if he wants to pop the ulti. Timber just completed his own BKB, so Magic Community. Now a part of Sun. Now something that Rising Stars has to account for on that already very survivable hero. Luo just pecking away at this tower again. Hitting for pretty solid damage. Sacred Arrow will connect. Now they gotta follow it up if they want to do something. There's the Chakram. The ulti comes out from CTY. 
Silence is out. Luo did not pop the BKB or the Haste Rune. Midnight Shadow covers. They don't have any detection. Oh my goodness. They have absolutely zero detection. I just clicked on all five of their inventories. If they go on that, they... I mean, I guess they've had good detection for most of the game, so Rising Stars is pretty scared. So they do actually manage to defend a T2, but this is not Saga or Medusa problem. Medusa, 1-0 and 10 right now. 10 assists, 157 last hits, and like he's probably higher on net worth than... Oh, no, actually not even close to net worth of <laughs> Silo right now, but he's still having much bigger impact than him yep. in this game. And Medusa scales a hell of a lot better than Lifestealer with that items and right now all those Midas's really just waiting on those to kick in I mean the one for the life stealer kicked in a while ago I saw Curass in production for the Night Stalker at least for the moment QQQ has 2,000 gold in the bank we'll see what he wants to build with his Midas gold and they're gonna go right back to the tier two and just say that's fine we're, we're willing to pull back wait for the sun to come up we're mourning we're mourning people anyway happy to take your tier two on your schedule no problem 10 to 18 Rattlesnake takes a little bit more map control and a bit more gold as well. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Rising Stars, and now what's remarkable is Rising Stars is actually managing to maintain a gold lead at this point. It is it's dipping up and down. Yeah, I, I mean, it's they're doing a decent job. They just... Oh, they're four man smoking without Medusa. If they try and take a fight without Medusa, this could be pretty bad. King J does have a TP in case it's close to the T2. Uh, uh, looks like Luo will rejoin them, though. They want to make something happen before the Roshan. I think it was completely right idea to let that tower fall, though. They can't take a fight with the Roshan. Well, at least they can't win a fight um, with the Aegis. Poking their nose around through the Radiant Jungle. Sag's looking for a swap target and might find it if CTY wants to hang out on the low ground a little bit target. He has to stay up the hill. Like a lot. He can't stand down here. If he gets hookshot, they lose two heroes. They lose the T2 and possibly the T3. They should just let this fall stay really far back. Rattlesnake going to go ahead and pull back, at least for the moment. Don't have a creep wave to shove down bottom, so can't rotate there. King J might be a target, though. He will be spotted by the Rocket Flare. Leaps himself into a corner. And here comes Icy. Up nope, through the hook. Ooh, that would have connected, too. Would have connected, yeah. but unfortunately, just a little bit slow to the poke. Doing, the Rising Star is doing very well now. They managed to avoid dying, they managed to split push, and they managed to avoid a fight where Medusa has the Aegis up. And now, time is coming very, very close to it expire, so one minute until then, and then maybe we may see uh, Rattlesnake overextend without that Aegis. And right now, just still need to... Uh, Still needs to just play a little bit passively right now. I don't know, like, they can take certain opportunities. For example, they see Medusa right here, and they see a couple of heroes in the middle. They can infest with a Moonlight Shadow or just Moonlight Shadow in and straight up just wreck them without the Medusa. I don't know why they're not taking advantages that they're giving them. And now that they're going to meet up, they can't really do anything about it. But at least Rattlesnake doesn't have their Aegis, so we may see them defend this T2. Waiting to see it. Yeah, they are going to go ahead and rotate down. Rattlesnake going to try to catch up. Nice hook. Catch up with King J. Can they prevent him from leaping? Nope, unable to do so. Four staff is there, has a haste room, forces the BKB pop, and they're going to respond with the TP. So, forcing the BKB out a win in and of itself. Let's see how committed to this push Rattlesnake is with Medusa's range and damage. They can't afford to just slow push this like they did that top tower. Aegis is going to be reclaimed in five seconds. And Roche back up at a random time sometime soon. Want to keep an eye here. Let's see. That's going to be actually a couple more minutes until we see the new timer pop up. But this bottom tier two, one of only two outer tier towers remaining, goes uncontested once again. You, and this is what uh, we, we were kind of talking about. I mean, Rising Stars just doesn't feel like they have any punching power. They just really feel impotent. They, f they had two TPs on top. They could have chased with Night Stalker. Again, they're just not taking advantage as being presented to them. They're only three strong right now without a Deuce. It's a very, very easy fight for them to take. And then they have Roshan control, too, for like the next uh, minute or so. Timbersaw has a BKB up right now. Uh, Sag has a Force F. There's also Force F on a Venomancer. So even though Rising Stars is ahead on gold right now, they're not that much ahead, only 1,000. And their supports are actually super farm. Um, Rising Stars just has a huge amount of net worth on the Life Stealer. But Night Soccer falling a little bit behind right now. Potom not actually too farmed either. This Midas not really helping out her out too much in that department. Siler, 6,700 gold in the bank. Got to go ahead and straight up buy a relic, and yep, there you go. Buys a an Abyssal in one shot. So he just got absolutely huge. Problem for him is he's going to have a little trouble striking at the Medusa, who just finished her butterfly. And that arrives in her inventory now. Now, 
this is one of those questions that you hope is going to be answered a certain way. You ask it with a big old grin on your face. Um, ZSMJ, a player we saw in action earlier, actually made his name as a uh, as a Carry Medusa player with a Divine Rapier build. Do you think potentially we might see Luo go with something like that? Oh, please say yes. He doesn't need it. He doesn't need it. He can just get a day. Shut your mouth. He does need it. I, I, I want to see you it, shut but your I don't mouth. think it's going to happen. Yeah, we'll see. Um, I, I don't like the Desolator pickup. It hasn't really done anything for him. Yeah. He he just has troubles latching on on targets. It's not like he doesn't do enough damage. He's actually getting kited very heavily uh, with Clockwork, with Swaps, with uh, Poison Sting, with Stone Gaze. There are just so many things that he can't really deal with right now, and he just needs to be able to stick on the targets. It's not a it's not a matter of whether or not he can uh, dish out enough damage. So I think if he goes like Basher and MKB or Abyssal um, MKB, then he's much better prepared for this sort of situation. But he didn't really get any mileage out of his Desolator. Oh, yeah, sure, it helped him farm a little bit faster. But in terms of winning team fights, absolutely not. I see a five-man pain drain heading the way of Rising Stars. They're going to have a chance to run across him. They're going to have their smoke popped. And... They're going to run. Oh, he took a hook and split the wickets. Didn't hit a single one. The immediate ulti pop. QQQ forced after the high ground. They're going to try to pursue this out, but they'll be doing so into Moonlight Shadow. There's the immediate kill on the Venomancer. Icy jumps up, pops a Ghost Scepter, and now 1-2-1 one, one, deciding to pursue this out. Up and down fight as Rising Stars moving up, down, and side to side. There's the Demonic Purge on a 1-2-1. One, one. Can they blow him up? This is where that Deso comes into play. Chakra, not enough to slow him down enough, so a complete disaster. That was... Uh, just awful. Oh, what in the world was Venno was like he forced up up the hill except he ran in one on five. He lost the gem right there, and that that just blows my mind how Rattlesnake can throw a lead that big with just one fight right there. They can just play it safe, do Roshan, cog them out. If they come to them, they have Stone Gaze. They have so many things. They have they can swap someone in out of position. Uh, they can hook shot. They have so many good. Uh, things for stationary fights like for example when they were pushing the t2s rising stars can't even go on them because they're that strong but when R rattlesnake's out of formation like that and their supports are just very vulnerable to pick off they will just straight up lose a fight oh one, one two, two one. one gets arrowed yep and the swap from sag trying to bail his buddy out they're gonna end up losing a rax here siler willing to sell out on it along with cty with the assault cure ass done that helps everyone the oh, mass armor the reduction shot after the stun oh goodness they were about to get a pick off on cty right there um he didn't have his bkb up he got stunned but i see unable to connect so just like that rattlesnake i would say they're in the lead even though they didn't have a good gold lead yep. uh they had total control of the game and <laughs> rising stars was really scared to take a fight and then just like that boom one rex and rattlesnake they didn't really make any mistakes prior to that like they they got the farm, they protected Luo, they were very aggressive, um, they had very nice execution during team fights, but, I mean, it's, it's, Dota is just such a fickle game sometimes. I can tell you what it is, and you're not going to like it. You, you build three Midas's, you're going to be a little weak in the mid-game, and that's exactly what we're <laughs> seeing happen. I mean, Rattlesnake just lacking some items. And yes, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it is enough to, to give you a situation like this, where you have a team that... You know, again, take a look at the gold graph. You're right, it was close up. Hang on, there's going to be a hook that's going to connect onto XDD. He will force staff out. QQQ is there as well, gets off the Nova. And Moonlight Shadow, once again, going to be used they again. They don't have sentries. Where is the detection? I mean, Master has it in his inventory. I mean, he has his minus. He should be able to afford them. <laughs> exactly. Just weird stuff coming out on both sides. Either way, Rattlesnake, I agree. Seem to have the momentum and, for all intents and purposes, the lead, even if the metrics, the, uh, the exact metrics, didn't seem to indicate that. But after that last fight, I mean... Here we go. Here's a smoke up the hill. This is a really bad fight for Rising Stars. They cannot push up this hill. That's such... Like, they can cog and zone them out. Stone Gaze, they be forced to retreat. Oh, they're actually doing something really smart and smoking around behind. And if they do that, they can pick off Johnny again. He has Sentry Wars, but he hasn't had him play. It's not like it matters versus a new smoke. There's smoke <laughs> not get revealed. And is Johnny going to get... Reveal Siler smoke just pop. They know something's up. They don't actually they don't actually have a word up here though. But do they have the gem? Here we go. There's the sacred arrow going to be off the marks. CTY pops the BKB. Stone Gaze is there to slow everyone down. Siler and CTY having a hard time getting on a target. CTY's BKB will be up in just a moment. And down he goes. One two one finishing him out. And Rising Stars paying back another very bad engagement after Rattlesnake had just had one. Seems like neither of these teams is very content to just take a win and stay ahead. And now Roshan, going to be the next target on the list. This is the second Roshan of the game. No cheese, but a much-needed Aegis going to be going to Rattlesnake. And tell you what, the uh, the gold 
it, it, it was close, and then it got out of hand. We're now up near five-digit lead, close to 10,000 gold in favor of rising stars. But it really, I mean, again, Rattlesnake is just so back and forth about it. They take the Aegis, and even though the metrics don't support it, they're in a pretty good position despite lacking Arax. Yeah, uh, the, they just have to take fights where Rising Stars comes to them. Every time Rising Stars come to this, comes to them, they lose a fight. For example, when they went on Medusa up top, when they tried to go on Medusa right here, they're very, very good when they're in the defensive position or they just ball up as five. And like when they have to overextend, like for example, up here, four staffing, they just cut out a position. So they just need to be smart about where they take their engagement. They can easily win if they just uh, execute their um, pushes pretty well and just take good fights. And Rising Stars, like, although they have the hill advantage right here, the hill, like, generally that'd be enough, but not versus Medusa. As soon as you stone gazes, everyone's forced to turn around. Someone gets caught in Cog, and boom, team fight lost because your BKBs are useless, including Rage. So they just need to be able to blow Medusa up before she gets her stone gaze off or just pick off the other people without getting caught by stone gaze. It's all about controlling this Medusa right now. She doesn't actually have a Lincolns, so they can uh, just, like, sort of... Um, just kite her with like a disrupt on her and just use the illusions against herself. Just hit her with an arrow. Uh, just run away and bait out the stone gaze without actually using your BKBs. Any of these would be uh, pretty good, but they're just, it, it's really difficult to execute that unless um, they like give you the opportunity like at the Radiant Ancients. Trying to keep an eye on Marana right now. She's got 5,400 gold to put towards that. It's going to be a defusal. I was going to say, want to see what item she wants to pick up. Going for the defusal, a little bit of extra damage, of course, a little slow action as well. And this is Man, very good versus Medusa, though. Very much anybody's game right now, depending on how this is taken. But they can't let this happen. They can't let Luo just take towers for free. They've given up they a couple have to of towers. They fight up the T3, though. They can't, they can't just go on Medusa right now. And even if they manage to land some miraculous initiate, they always have swap. They always have counter initiate with Clover Cook. So they just have to let it fall. There's nothing they can really do about it. Um, next creep wave, they should just. Uh, defend on a T3, they should be split pushing right now. They don't really want to take a fight right now, especially with Dusa having the Aegis. Even if they do manage to kill her, they have to chomp through her mana shield again, and her butterfly, and her mantis style, and the defensive swaps. It's just too much to deal with. If they lose this T2 fight, they lose the racks as well. So it's a very risky position for Rising Stars. I think they should just do the same thing that they did last time, wait for the Aegis to run out. There's a disruption onto Luo, and the Sacred Arrow was actually mistimed slightly. Just... Trying to hold on. I think that's what they're doing here. They're just trying to survive the siege, wait on the Aegis to expire, and try to take an even fight, if not a fair fight, given uh, how well the Medusa has farmed. Oh, well, looks like Rattlesnake is backing off. I don't think they should because they... They're going to be Rising Stars is going to be able to delay until the Aegis is down, and then all that work for that Roshan and winning that fight 2-0 and is just going to go to waste. Luo is getting items though, so it's not the worst choice in the world. But they could have taken that in the T2, and then all of a sudden Rising Stars forced to confine to their T3s and even being scared at night um, with a Night Stalker. That's not the position you want to be in. Taking a look at the life at the lifestealer, Siler is absolutely again just gigantic is the only word that really suits. I mean, a Medusa who has farmed nineteen thousand net worth by forty two minutes is certainly in good shape. But then you look at the lifestealer; he's at twenty two thousand. Siler just finished a butterfly, so he's got a Deso, a butterfly, an abyssal, and his armlet to go with his phase boots and one TP scroll. So. At this point, he has the ability to blow up just about anyone if he can stick on them. The problem is, as we've covered so far, they have tools to make that tough to do. Yeah, he can't just, like, walk up to them. That's just not going to happen. He's going to get caught. He's going to get hook shot. He's going to get stone gazed. So I think he, like, this is one of the problems why, uh, like, Nix isn't as picked as much anymore is because the mids have changed, too. Like, Night Stalker is not a good carrier for Infest, and usually you can just close the distance, boom, someone's dead during a blink, and then pop out Infest and Rage. But Siler, he is forced to use the Infest, like, most of the time defensively instead of offensively, and he can't really close the gap except unless he blows Rage. But once he blows Rage, he just... Highly vulnerable to stone gaze and all these anti magic um, or anti BKB spells that Rattlesnake has right now. So, Siler still needs another item. MKB probably next choice that we see a missed, yep. missed uh, hook shot by Icy. Yep. We've seen a lot of missed hook shots today. Some miscommunication there. Icy just kind of throwing one out there, I do believe, trying to go fishing. And unfortunately, couldn't get the, uh, the cast out of the boat that time. We're going to see a Scotty now. Picked up on Medusa. Medusa is pretty large and in charge, my friend. Manta, Scotty, mm. Butterfly, Drums. That is a lot of stats. Look at her stat ratings. 
Strength is plus 52. Agility plus 106. Intelligence plus 52. Luo is pretty damn huge. This makes things even more difficult for the life stealer too. Another a Scotty going through BKB two and rage, so they're just gonna get kited. They're gonna like walk up to her, get sto get slowed by Stone Gaze, get slowed by um, I have Scotty, and be forced to turn around and just die. So they have to delay. They absolutely must delay at least one minute until the Aegis is down. She doesn't have buyback right now, so that is the trade off of her buying the Scotty. And they have a pretty small window, but if they had taken the T two earlier, things are a lot easier. And now they're gonna be they're gonna have this like twenty second window where they can take the T three. It's gonna be very very tight timing for rattlesnake right now and it looks like king j already applying a lot of pressure to the right side and cty needs to be on top of being able to pick them off if they decide to retreat and king j is the one that's going to be able to force that to happen oh rattlesnake looks like they want to back off so it is it is fairly risky though pushing without the ages and without a buyback see king j gets the job done bringing down the last outer tier tower remaining and at this point, we are completely clear and open. The map, anyone's to be had at 45 minutes in, taking a look at the gold graph. It has gotten pretty out of control for, for Rising Stars again, which is hard to believe given just how farmed Luo happens to be. What it's going to come down to is how effectively can Rattlesnake kite the two melees? Can they kite the Life Stealer? Can they kite the Night Stalker? And I don't mean they have to kite him to oblivion to the point they don't get any damage done. But you get the impression, looking at this team from Rattlesnake, if they're able to kite them even for a few seconds, five, six seconds, the duration of a BKB or a Rage, that might be enough to just guarantee a win. I, I don't even think it's a matter of whether or not they can win team fights. I definitely think they can win team fights if they just push up as five. I think the problem is, are they going to be able to split push out the lanes enough and control Roshan and then actually push as five? That's like the biggest issue for me right now just because rising stars they're just constantly split pushing they know they can't take a team fight right now and they know that dusa is just massive large and in charge and they're just desperately trying to push out the lanes as fast as possible and like just make them huddle up as a ball because if luo dies right now um and uses they can just force a buyback right now and then after that it's really downhill for rattlesnake and if they lose another racks right now it's going to be pretty difficult dusa is one of the best mega creep defenders in the game but you don't want to give up that so easily so he's still farming for his buy. oh he actually has farmed for his buyback right now he's almost six letter right now no bot's though so he's still relatively immobile as is the rest of the rattlesnake team no bot's on timber saw either there's a scythe that buys completed on crystal maiden so now i think they can use infest bombs if someone decides to split push out on their own just get a blink on crystal maiden blink and fest bomb boom someone's dead and they really need to make use of their lineup they haven't used moonlight shadow offensively they haven't used infest um offensively either they're just not really playing offensive when they have a night soccer and aggressive heroes on their team uh high C narrowly misses a hook shot though on uh on the mid hero siler would have been dead i believe luo's the one leading the charge now that's gonna be four of them make it five as I see does rejoin them and the push potential is definitely there. Chakram yep. plus... King J push faster. It's, it's all on him. Can he push fast enough to actually make them defend? I uh, I don't know. It is for stronger creeps. They do have Glyph up. This is a really, really crucial fight. There we go. Let's see if they want to engage out on this. Marana still deciding to push. Has yet to show any signs of retreat. And here we go. Down go the cogs. CTY pops the BKB. He's being caught out by the Scotty. Here comes Siler. Going to use open wounds on Luo. And the four staff gets him out of trouble. So Siler's Rage going to be wearing off in just a moment. There's the hook right as Rage expires, but Moonlight Shadow's there. Disruption from the high ground to the low. And we're going to see a kill on the Shadow Demon. In the meantime, the rest of Rising Stars continuing to hang. We can see up. Uh, they're actually going to catch 1-2-1 one, one out now. He went in and tried to get a little bit too aggressive. Ends up having to buy back now. So Rattlesnake making a bit of a mistake. And Pick he up the gym. And he doesn't have bots, so he has to run it back if he wants to get back into this fight. And for a while there, it looked like Rattlesnake was in the advantage, but by the end, just not able to really get that tower cracked. Good disrupt by uh, Shadow Demon there. He just needs to disrupt the do so. His images do so much damage right now. Uh, disruption is, what, 60% damage of what Medusa already does. So that's already, we're talking about like, uh, a little bit more than what the original Medusa actually does. And even if he dies for it, it's not that big of a loss for them. Uh, they are able to take out Roshan right now. Can they defend this? I do not. Or can uh, Rising Stars actually do something about it? I don't think so. And now is where it really gets troublesome. Rattlesnake, 
Um, they're gonna have the cheese, they're gonna have the Aegis. This Roshan is already dead, even though the arrow scattered it out. Uh, Luo has the Aegis, he has 4,900 gold too. If he buys Rapier, just straight pushes mid, I, th I don't think they can take it, so... Um, yeah. Hope so, man. Hope you're right. Necro Book, gonna be the pickup on the Venomancer, because it wouldn't be a Dota game if it's not for Necro Book and Midas. Gotta have both in copious amounts. Luo continuing to just melt down creeps, but we can see... I mean, Rising Stars, despite being in the lead, and not just kind of in the lead, Rising Stars is, has a five-digit lead. Granted, it's 50 minutes, so that can be reversed quickly, but... Oh, he sold the Midas. King JY. <laughs> Needed to make room, man. He's got more stuff to build. Got me He's just building stuff, man. It's like playing Minecraft. Don't worry about it. They're pushing. They're doing a very good job of split pushing right now because they do have the racks advantage right now. It doesn't really feel like it, but uh, Rattlesnake's just forced to just run around constantly, push out their side lanes so they don't lose one more racks. Like one racks by itself is not that big of a deal, but the bigger deal is they can't afford to lose another one. We see yep. TP and no uh, oh, hookshot will try and miss. So like right now, Rising Stars they just need to keep constant vision over Rattlesnake right now. If uh, Rattlesnake catches them off guard with a smoke, forces a buyback, and then just pushes, it's a throne. So it's still anybody's game right now. Rising Stars is just trying to play very, very smart and Observer Ward. Pretty smart Observer Ward, I must say. Uh, right there, just scouted out. And they see Dusa. They know like the team's behind her right now. They can't really take a fight without her, so they should be able to push. And this three-man crew isn't really going to be able to get anything accomplished, so I don't really know why they're uh doing that they, like right now they see they see dudes oh. top she doesn't have a tp they can pick them off yes oh, there's a rapier yep okay here it goes told you this is it what are you telling fibs for telling fibs on my stream well, Merlini? I'm, I'm excited this is gonna be awesome we are watching the medusa pretty much exclusively at this point because she is doing a gorillion damage and a half and uh my, what are you talking about she has <laughs> minus nine man oh obviously i mean <laughs> you're doing nothing absolutely nothing god i can't wait to see this this is something that, again, I, I've she wanted to have see. a TP scroll, though, so they can abuse her lack of mobility. You can sell her trash and get bots. Yeah, easy, she doesn't easy. have enough gold. Imagine that. If only she had Midas. If only she had Midas. I'm saying she, she could sell her treads, my friend, and get bots, and we'll see. Does she have enough Do gold? It. Do no, it. Do it, Luo. It's still not enough gold. It's only 800 goldish, so yeah. or 700 gold. He's still. She can wait. Short. She has a rapier. She can do whatever the hell she likes. No buyback, man. I guess it doesn't matter if you have buyback when you have rapier. But exactly. Aegis rapier, can they make a push in three minutes' time? That's the big question. Can they actually force uh, force a fight? If they push bottom, now Rising Stars pushes top. They they might be able to get a Rax before they even come up to T3. So, like, like Rattlesnake, they have the big advantage right now. Even though gold's not in their favor, they have the just massive team fight, the super stack Medusa right now. Still behind... Uh, the life stealer, though, surprisingly. The Siler has 7,700 gold in his bank. Aegis reclaimed in three minutes. They want to get something out of it. Now's the time. Sacred Arrow to, uh, will connect. Push top right now and try and threaten their racks. But nope. Looks like, what is he going to buy now? That's the big question. I guess MKB, so your well, what is he going to sell? Those are mega oh, creeps he was just melting, by the way. <laughs> this this one, is, I just want to point that out. Um, not just regs. Thems, thems were megs. And here we go. King J taking a lot of damage from the low ground. Just look at this chunk, Ridiculous. chunk, 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 chunk. Just casually nipping away. Disrupt him, man. And here we go. Split shot. Doing the damage. There's an MKB up and the Ghost Scepter. Trying to buy him time to disrupt. Out come the illusions. Now they've got to deal with those very quickly. For, so much gold for Shadow Demon. For quite obvious reasons. And there's the Sacred Arrow that will connect on 1-2-1. One, one. Do they want to come out? They do not. Medusa still has a rapier and an Aegis. Right, right now, if they had one hero top, they would they, they would probably win right now because someone's forced to defend, but whatever. Here we go. There's a disruption of an illusion. Luo. And he will be hexed out. Mecking through it. Do they want to try to move on it? No. Necro Creeps helping to storm the sigil here along with Luo. The heavy artillery just sitting on the low ground. And Icy once again caught by the Sacred Arrow. Here comes CTY. Runs up, throws out the void. There's another disruption. They managed to take down the tier three. They need to bring down their illusions. And they will be able to do so. Demonic Purge kind of wasted there on Johnny. No real reason for that. And that could come back to hurt him. Sacred Arrow oh, will catch Luo go. and the Frostbite, but there's going to be a stun thrown out from Vinge. Now they're going to try to get on Luo. Luo swapped out. Beautiful play. Brought back by Sag. He's still alive, still has the Aegis up. Now keep in mind 6.79 when the Aegis expires. Oh, they, dropped, they gave him the cheese. My goodness. I was going to say, when the Aegis expires, it now heals the, the bearer for a full, you know, for full health, basically. So not only did they give him the cheese, but they also 
have the Aegis to rely on. Not that it matters, as they, they had the best opportunity ever right there. A frostbite after a Sacred Arrow. This guy right here might be the MVP of the game for his play. Sag has balled out, my friend. And not just because of that play. He has had some amazing saves, some great initiation. And on a hero that usually has an impact, but not quite to the level, he's made Binge have an impact. So, well played. Luo going to be four staffed away after being hexed out. And his team is really doing a great job of supporting him right now. Allowing him. is about to expire, though, in 30 seconds' time. So Rising Stars can Up swap, swap on the CTY, right into the cogs. Beautifully timed. CTY pops the BKB. Luo just pecking away from long distance, though. And CTY will be bursted down. He's down for 75 seconds. Siler cannot stand up to the damage. Great hook from Icy. Chakram is there. That is going to be all she wrote. Buyback is not really going to matter. Night Stalker. Not going to be up. They've already got one set of racks down. Rattlesnake on the back of a farmed Medusa. Finishing the game out despite Siler sitting atop the net worth charts the entire game. I'm surprised. They, I'm sorry, really surprised they're not just going to call GG at this point. They honestly they should just rate right now, though. This is It's still pretty close. It's only a one racks difference uh, for them right now. But I think Rising Star just misplayed that yep. so badly. They they should have just kept pushing top. And you saw how long they delayed. And it was mostly just like the Shadow Demon. Siler was up there. All he does, push. If they don't, if they TP back, Medusa doesn't have a TP. Just kill her, get the, the Rapier GG. Or if um, they just back off with her and you can just pick off somebody else. There, there was an opportunity that presented itself right there, but Siler instead decided to walk to the secret shop, sell his TP scroll, get an MKB that didn't really do anything because yep. he wasn't able to latch onto a target. If he just keeps his TP scroll, pushes out top, they're forced to back and you live to fight another day, wait until the Aegis is down and then take a fight so that if you actually kill, if you kill Medusa, it actually matters instead of you just losing a fight because you committed too much to killing the Aegis and now they're one racks down instead of being one racks up. Rising Stars had a very, very good opportunity to uh, like take a win right there and they just kind of toss it away and now the Medusa with Rapier is just super stacked right now. 6,800 gold. It could be a double Rapier that we're seeing. And getting a disruption on the illusions to help him shove this out just a smidgen. Luo sitting at 2,400 HP right now. 23 armor on top of everything else. 7,000 gold sitting in his inventory. And uh, at this point, I mean, what do you even buy? Of course, Boots of Travel would seem to be one of the major options, but what do you do? Do you save that slot for the next Aegis, or do you actually try to fill it up with something? I think Rapier with no treads, and it's probably the... Rapier and Aegis with no treads is probably the best idea mm -hmm. uh, right now for him. You can even sell your Manta if you want to and just get a third Rapier. Easy. <laughs> Mass <laughs> Rapiers. Easy peasy, bro. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Like your Manta illusions don't get the plus damage from Rapier. Uh, right. They do get the butterfly though. So, I mean, they they can't. He doesn't need a move. Is the thing. He just needs to sit there and pew pew away with his mass arrows. Yeah, just needs to. Now, now Rising Stars are trying to split push, but that, they should have done that like five minutes ago when the Aegis was still up. And they're, I don't know. I, I'm just really sad that they misplayed it. They, they, they should be smarter than that. Sacred Arrow. Whoa! Oh, nice four stab. Johnny gives him the old Ole. No way you're pushing into Luo with a rapier. Just not going to happen. This is a really bad idea. If they swap Siler, cog him in, it's over. Yep. Um, and he doesn't have buyback. So they really have to be aware of that. And I, like, you can see them doing it right now. Like, Venge and Clockwork are sitting on top of each other. Swap cog, it's over for Siler. So they have to back off right now. They can't risk it. They need to wait for a. Um, they need to wait for buyback on Siler to still in quite some time, but it's their best thing they can do right now. And their base is just absolutely getting mowed down by creeps. Tier 4 down to half health back at home. XDD trying to do his best to hold the line. And we're actually going to see QQQ forced to blow Freezing Field just to clear out the battlefield. Make a little space for the squishies to breathe. Shadow Demon actually picks up a Blink Dagger. Very nice pick up there for him. I like it. Um, Roche is going to be back up here in about 45 seconds, give or take. So, very important fight coming up. If there is one last stand that Rising Stars can make, it will be contesting this Roshan. Problem is, they're on the Radiant side, and they have no idea when the big guy is going to be showing up. Yeah, they need to shoot arrows, send uh, illusions in, whatever they need to do. Uh, also, they need to put pressure on top. No one is pushing out this top lane, and that's just not... I mean, they, they have to push out that lane right now. And if they can even the racks out, it's a small thing, but... They need to contest this Roshan too. Looks like it's going to respawn right about now. And they're going to know with this Venomancy Ward. Here we go. Roche coming up in three, 
two, one. Yep. Hang on. There's a disruption. They're going to try to get on Sag. Nice four snap gets him out of trouble. There's Moonlight Shadow and Rattlesnake. Oh, nice hook. Going to catch CTY. He is inside. There's the immediate four staff out. Trying to bang his way out. BKB buys him a little bit of time, but you can see the amount of damage he's taking. Frostbite locked Luo down momentarily. 9,000 gold Luo happens to have, and we're going to have another hook securing yet another kill. And the rest of Rising Stars has to just hang back. Crystal Maiden forced to buy back after being hooked out. Roche is up. I didn't see if the actual war. gold on Luo. And now they can just take this Roche and just sweep down mid. Rising Stars, there's no way they can defend <laughs> this right now. If he actually spends his gold. I'm curious to see whether he is going to buy another Reaper. I think he should. Hope so. Let's... Sell those shreds. Do it, Luo. Sell those shreds. Get Sell the shreds. Aww. Sell the Mesa. Aww. Come on. I want to see you. I want to see a thousand damage. Uh, I guess maybe like if he dies right now, buy some like miracle. If he dies twice, then he can pick up another rapier. But like I don't even think he's gonna die once to be honest. And if he gets a rapier, they can just straight up end the game. But death push just looks to be the final push of the game. And rising stars with no lanes pushed out, they are at a loss as to what to do right now. BKBs do not matter versus a massive physical damage from Dusa and. They've been punished for letting her farm for way too long. And yep. yeah, yeah, Midas is. What <laughs> satanic. Does that do? I can say 35,000 net worth to do so. How about a satanic to go with it? Well, I mean, where's where she going to put it? I guess she can just have it like on chicken and right, out, <laughs> right, right outside of the thing and just have, give it to him when she loses ages. But I don't think she's going to lose it. I'm actually surprised she didn't go with the uh, Havos where you just buy extra rapiers and put them in your stash just in case. But uh, Luo continuing to just melt these creeps down. Here we go. Going to be four staffed in. Now Luo's in trouble. Can they blow him up fast enough? No. Another big swap. And the freezing field is there. Can they get the damage done? Luo just melting everyone on the side of Rising Stars. No chance. Had a big play, but Sag was there once again to be the savior. And that should be all she wrote. Two racks down. There's going to be another swap. Luo does not care. Siler trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Four staffed out. And that'll be it. GG should be coming any moment now. Yep. CTY, the one to call it. A 61-minute slugfest. And you take a look at that. 10,000 gold deficit turned around and brought back virtually to zero by the time all was said and done. 14,000 experience turned around as well. And the moral of the story, kids, Medusa takes a while to kick in. So, uh, you know, don't let her farm for an hour. How's that sound? Yeah, Sag played really well this game. I think oh, he yeah. was the MVP on the side of uh, Rattlesnake. Luo played really well, too. He didn't actually end up dying, but mostly that was due to the good play of the support. Clockwork only one death in a 61-minute game. That is very unusual. 1-2-1 one, one with 15 kills on Timber Saw. Rattlesnake really just stepped it up this game. And, I mean, to be honest, Rising Stars, they had an opportunity to win the game, abusing the mobility, the lack of mobility on the opposite team. and just didn't take it. You can't, they couldn't 5-on-5 five five at all, and I don't know why they tried to and when Medusa had the rapier in the ages. So just let it fall, um, split force a little better, or just don't give CT White nice after. I think that is just not his zero. Don't pick it for him if they <laughs> want to win the game number two. T totally agree with you. And you know, it's what, what was the, the criticism we had? I mean, whenever we were talking about how they played so far, what the reputation was, they know how to get a lead. It just seems like they don't know how to keep a lead and they don't know how to win with a lead. And you, we saw how well Rising Stars can play over and over again in that match. But in the end, Rattlesnake just able to shut the door in their face. And, you know, you look at you look at the Medusa. I mean, obviously, 3-1-17 had 17 assists. So uh, involved in 20 of the 27 kills that Rattlesnake notched that game. And uh, last, it's 591. And that's okay for him. It's okay. Even the Life Stealer, who was level 25. That's a funny thing. Medusa actually didn't ever hit the level cap. But, um, I mean, had more last hits and so on and so forth. It seems like a simple thing in retrospect. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. but Rising Stars had a simple mission. Get ahead, hold down the Medusa. That's their late game. Don't let them get to the late game. And unfortunately, just unable to do so. So uh, one of the longer games we've had, another very long one. We had one the other night as well. 61 minutes and two seconds, 14 to 27. The final kill score. I'm your host, Aaron A.C. Chambers, live here on the floor of our downtown studio. Ben Merlini will bring you the insight and analysis. And tell you what, that was a long one, but a lot of fun to get to see a Medusa. So I can see on both sides of us our Twitter addresses. If you want to go ahead and follow us there, I'm adding C at A-Y-E-S-E-E. -E -E. And Merlini is at Merlini. You can also find him 
at uh, various other corners of the web. Check out his YouTube, his website, so on and so forth. Just do a search for Nervin Dota, no matter what social media network or other hosting sites you might want to have to be checked into. Uh, for me, you can find me at ACTV on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook, and just at AC on, uh, on Twitter. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. Long game, but just one game of this best of three. And uh, Rising Stars, again, a great team that just can't seem to hold it together long enough once they get a lead. Rattlesnake, one win away from notching their first uh, their first mark in the win column here in the Eastern Division. And uh, sending Rising Stars to a very treacherous 0-4 record, which is really going to put them up against if they won't have any hope of making our playoffs. So we'll find out if Rising Stars can turn it around, win two in a row, and be the second team to force a best of three tonight. Or if Rattlesnake's going to be able to shut the door for good and hang a goose egg on him. We'll be right back, guys, here on the HyperX D2L. Stick with us.